Number 41. Calculate the equilibrium constant at 25 degrees Celsius for each of the following reactions from the value of delta G notch given. Okay, so we have N2O3 gas yields NO gas plus NO2 gas, and they give me the Gibbs free energy of negative 1.6 kilojoules. Okay, so we want to find that equilibrium constant. Keep in mind that the equilibrium constant is capital K. Now, they didn't specifically say what K value we're looking for here. Chances are it's KP because they're all gases, but didn't say, so I'm just going to leave it as K. But it doesn't matter because there's only one uh, equation that links an equilibrium constant with the delta G. And there's two variations, but since we're solving for the equilibrium constant, it's easiest to just memorize the formula as this. It's K equals the E button on the calculator, all raised to the negative delta G divided by RT. So I got three units here that I have to deal with. Well, let's start with the R value. Keep in mind that the R value is always a constant number, right? R, 8.314, because we're talking about energy. Units, if we're using 8.314, is joules per mole times Kelvin. These units will dictate what units are allowed in this formula. So for example, the temperature, Kelvin is in the R value, so this has to be in Kelvin. But they gave it to us at 25 degrees Celsius. But that's okay, because I can just quickly convert 25 degrees Celsius into Kelvin, right? We just gotta add 273. More specifically, we'll add 273.15, right? Room temp, 25 degrees Celsius, if we add the value, that's 298.15. So we're good with that. Now comes delta G. Our value unit says that I need joules. Ah, they gave me kilojoules. But that's okay, because I can quickly convert kilojoules into joules. Kilojoules to joules times by 1,000. So I'm just going to take this decimal, move it to the right three times. And it seems like I got negative 1,600. That looks about right. And that's the number going on over here. All right, let's solve for that equilibrium constant. K equals, let's see, K equals E raised to the negative fraction. We now have a negative 1,600. And then we have the two values on the bottom. So I have 8.3 and 4. And then I have the 298. 0.15. Keep in mind that all this is being raised by the E. Negative times a negative, that's a positive value. So when I put it into the calculator, I'm not even going to worry about the negatives. The first thing you should do is simplify what this is. So I'm just going to go on the calculator and I'm going to say 1,600 divided by 8314. And now since the 298.5 is in the denominator, and I'm not using any parentheses, I'm going to say divide again by 298.15. There we go. So I get E raised to the 0 0.6489, no, 6.454, etc., etc., right? So... Remember, this is not the answer, so don't round, but I'm not going to write all those letters there, right? So, we're going to say K equals, we're going to go on the calculator, we're going to press second, LN, I hope the mailman, or the mail lady is okay. <laughs> My dog is not having it. But I'm going to grab that number, we're just going to keep rolling. And there we go. Now we add sig figs. My G value has only two sig figs, so I'm only allowed two. So it would be just 1.9. And that's about it. So there is the final answer. Whoop, whoop. Okay, I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if you have, I really do appreciate you. You know, everybody out there who's watching these videos and who's learning from them, all right? I hope you have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.